All right, in this video, we're going to add a end of arm tooling to our robot. So in the beginning, when I initialize a brand new work cell, I did not add an end of arm tooling to this. I'm going to add it from a CAD file. So if I go down here, so inside here, I create a very basic end of arm tooling like a suction cup. So I did this in millimeters instead of in actual inches and I just converted everything from millimeters to inches so that I knew how big it was. And we're going to now import this into our RoboGuide software. And so the first thing we need to do is make sure we save this as an item in which RoboGuide can actually read. I like to save it as an object file. So I go just go file, save as, save copy as, and make sure I do it as a object file. So go down here, object files, and then I save it as that. I already have it saved, so I'm not going to resave it. I have it saved as suction. So I go inside here, and the first thing I like to do is change it so that my end of arm tooling is facing down, so 90 degrees. So I have all joints at zero, and then joint number five I have at negative 90 degrees. Now we're going to add the actual end of arm tooling. So a lot of times you'll see this as a plus. We're going to hit the plus. We're going to hit the plus next to our actual robot. And then you'll hit the plus next to tooling. And then here's all the end of arm toolings we could set up with the user tool. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to go end of arm tooling number one properties. And right here we're going to name it. So I'm going to call this suction. And here is the actual CAD file we're going to pull from. We're going to open up from a folder. And remember when you do this and when you are creating a cell, I always like to put anything of CAD in the exact same cell or the exact same directory in which this robot file is housed. So I'm going to open up suction and then I'm going to hit apply. And then you'll see the actual end of arm tooling here. We're going to have to do a little bit of rotations on this and then maybe some offsets. So if I go 90... There we go. So we got the correct direction. We just have to actually flip it around. So we're going to go instead of 90, we're going to go negative 90. There we go. We have it offset in the correct direction. Now let's go in the Z direction. And if I remember right, my total height of this is 140 millimeters. So if I go 140, enter. Now I have my end of arm tooling in the proper place. And now all I have to do is set up the actual U tool. So we just set up the actual where it is located on the actual head. Let's go to the U tool, edit U tool, and then I'm going to go my Z offset of 140 millimeters. So if I hit apply, now I have my offset to be 140 millimeters. Let's look at it from front to make sure it's perfect and go up to the top. And it looks like we are perfect on the end of arm tooling here. So because this is straight down, I don't have to mess with anything else of the X, Y, and Z. Um, if you want to rotate this a little bit so the X direction is off to the side and the Y direction is off to the side, you can do so. Um, but right now I'm going to keep this the same as our robot world view. So that's how we add an end of arm tooling to the end of your robot. And it's the same way if you create a rectangular end of arm tooling, a multiple faceted end of arm tooling, it's basically the same steps. So just go in the general, change your direction, change your offsets. You can change the scaling. You can also actually add the mass. Let's add the mass to this as well. So I'm going to say it's about 0.2 of a kilogram. So it's not very heavy weight. So that will also get factored into how fast your robot will actually move um, when it comes to the payload. Okay, so we have the general and the U-tool are the two parts that we modify. 